Good Monday morning, ladies. Good morning, Oz. Good morning, Good morning. John. Hey, what's going on? We have a new face here on the dive this morning. Who might that be, Shanda? Uh, that would be Savage Joy. We are so excited to have her on this morning and so excited for tonight. Yeah, we are commemorating. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. We're commemorating your debut show on Uphill Media tonight. So uh, can you give us a little bit of information on that? What are you going to talk about and everything? Yeah, so today I'll be doing my first show uh, with Uphill um, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, so I'll just kind of be uh, giving a little bit of my background and, and what you guys can ex expect um, on my show, um, some upcoming guests, things like that. Um, and then we're just going to discuss this week's news and, and talk about um, things that are going on which are inspiring us and infuriating us and all that fun stuff. Coolio. Well, we're looking forward to that. And I've got to throw a disclaimer out there, uh, Joy, because, you know, usually on first shows, something monumental happens. Hopefully we won't have an asteroid hit Washington State or, or, or where you're at, for that matter. And uh, sometimes the power goes out. But if that happens, uh, we will record the show and redrop it or re-live stream it. So I just want to throw that out there in case uh, the unmentionable happens. And uh, again, we're looking forward to it tonight and it's uh, so wonderful to have you here on board and uh, I, I, I guess we can get going Shanda you you dropped us a link this morning uh, from uh, the hill uh, Fox News caught faking Chaz photos as protest propaganda you want to lead into this a little bit sure um, I think Crystal does a great job of calling their bullshit out and we all know that's what it is it's propaganda and BS you know uh, a lot of the uphill team is in Washington State so we are getting firsthand knowledge accounts videos and some of us have even been to Chaz so we know what's going on there and uh, it's complete doggy do what they're saying is going on there doggy do what a harsh thing to say i know what? pelosi says it so is that what she says <laughs> that must be where i got like, it is that well she has doggy do and his shoe is that okay i'm gonna clap there is that yeah that's that it, what, what do we call this the maca pelosi the or what? i call it the pelosi the pelosi okay all right well let's hear what crystal's got to say Fox News got a little overly brazen in their propaganda last week, even by their own standards. This is actually really something. So as we covered here last week, activists have taken over a six block area in downtown Seattle in a sort of Occupy type encampment. They're calling it the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or CHAZ. Here's a report from the scene. Protesters are calling the neighborhood the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, now named CHAZ for short. Behind barricades placed by demonstrators are dozens of Seattle businesses, many boarded up, but outside, tents are popping up, filled with everything from first aid to snacks to face masks. It's not nothing aggressive or violent or nothing like that. We'd, we didn't come out here for any of that. But while locals are seeing murals, film nights, a harm reduction workshop, and supportive local businesses, the masterminds of Fox News see a grave menace, a small tear in the fabric of society, which left unchecked could quickly devolve into a hellscape of militant leftist thugs sowing anarchy and chaos. Well, I mean, mostly they just saw a market opportunity to do what they do best, which is paint a scene of apocalyptic horror with which they could terrify their elderly audience. There's just one problem. The protesters on the scene haven't given them, a, given them a whole lot of material to work with. Nothing a few fake photos can't fix, though. Seriously. First of all, they took an actual image of a man with a gun in the autonomous zone, and they just went ahead and photoshopped him all over the place. Here he is photoshopped into a picture of one of the signs welcoming visitors into Chaz. This image appeared on Fox News' website alongside supposedly straight news reporting with no indication that it had been photoshopped. Here is that same dude again, appearing with vandalized shops in an even more brazen propaganda effort. So those vandalized shop images were actually all taken from the very early violent days of the protest. Nothing like that is reported to have occurred in the autonomous zone since it was taken over by protesters. But in perhaps the most egregious example, this was the display on the Fox News homepage that blared crazy town with a whole bundle of articles about the autonomous zone. There's only one problem. 
That photo was from Minnesota, not from Seattle. So when they got called out on these blatant errors and manipulations by the Seattle Times, a Fox News spokesperson responded that they had replaced our photo illustration with the clearly delineated images of a gunman and a shattered storefront, both of which were taken this week in Seattle's autonomous zone. A statement that isn't even actually true since the storefront photos were actually taken back on May 30th. They later posted an editor's note to the article saying that they regretted the error. They, they regret the error, ladies. <laughs> They, they regret it. You know, I actually saw a live stream of this guy with the gun as he was heading to the Chaz, uh, you know, because he was going to go restore democracy to Seattle. And, you know, it, th this is dangerous. This type of propaganda is so dangerous because I saw a report yesterday that Hell's Angels are en route to Seattle to take it back. Now, I can't confirm that that is true, but it's definitely something that they're pushing. And like we saw in my small town, you know, these patriots get riled up and they're going to go save our country from these, you know, crazy leftists, which is just fucking hilarious. Make up your mind. Are we snowflakes that are scared of the Second Amendment or are we radicals? We can't be both. What do you think about all that, Joy? Yeah, I agree. It's, it's you know, it's situations like these two that which make me so proud to be part of independent media because we are able to actually call this bullshit out um unfortunately we see too often that uh people just simply don't do research and even if you provide research um afterwards and say look this was full of shit this is totally fake you are a conspiracy theorist for <laughs> pointing out um, that it's fake and you are the one who, um, you know, duped these, uh, these, these photos and, um, you know, Photoshop them and everything and it's on you. The news doesn't lie. Um, so once, unfortunately, you take something like this and ingrain it into people's head, the chance of them actually you know, reneging what they said and saying, you know what, you're right. I take it back. That that sounds more feasible. It, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and they know that. And that's why it's advantageous for them to to do things like this, because the seed has already been planted. We, those people have already been disrespected. Well, I, you know, it's it sounds like uh, Fox when they should be, uh, you know, removing that article or, you know, mea coping on uh, that it wasn't actually correct, you know, correction. Uh, instead of that, they're double talking with with more bullshit like usual. And I want to say, you know, although Fox may be the king or queen of doing this sort of thing, it happens on almost all the virtual mainstream media networks at one point or another. It's just that Fox has been the leader since the their inception was in like 1986 or something, Roger Ailes and crew. I, I just, uh, you know, they've been this tabloid type news. And I was always in fear because back in the day when I was working in my grocery retail, I used to see all these tabloid papers, uh, you know, the, the, the Globe and the Sun and the Enquirer. And I think, God, you know, if that ever went to what we have is what they call mainstream media today, we're in deep trouble because virtually all that crap is just infotainment, satire, garbage. And this is the perception that people are getting these days uh, of news who are engaged. Those who are sitting at home being entertained by what they think is news, the days of Cronkite and Huntley Brinkley, they're not getting that. They're being propagandized once again. And this is one of the worst faces of propaganda, in my opinion. So there again, there we go. I, we and there was go no interwebs back then. No. So there was like no real excuse kind of to be ignorant. Now, if you see something that seems like, whoa, holy shit, do your research. It literally takes a minute. Uh, there's no excuse to be so ignorant um, in a time like these. We have all, every single person, even us journalists, we have all posted one thing, at, at least one thing that we're like, fuck. But we are responsible enough to actually 
you know, remove it and say, Hey, sorry about that. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I removed it. It's not legit. And then I've even gone as far as, you know, uh, tagging the people who shared it and things like that, because it happens, but some people just do it continuously. Exactly. Shanda, you got this uh, Bill Grabriel comment here. Yeah, Trump repeated the Fox News line, uh, the anarchists are taking over Seattle at his roundtable rally at the Gateway Church in Dallas last week. You know, we see Trump, I, I don't know if any of you know, but he's planning this rally for Tulsa. And I highly, I, I implore you to please go do some research about Juneteenth and what it actually means to the black community and what we did as a country to cover up what happened in Tulsa 99 years ago. Basically, we firebombed a complete community, a, a raving mad lynch mob, and, and killed hundreds of them. And our government still to this day won't admit it. And to have Trump go down there and incite his hate and his bullshit during such a, it's so disrespectful. And in the temperature that our country is in right now, I'm very scared for what it's going to, you know, what it's going to spark off because it's just going to be more angry, misinformed mobs of, of, you know, his supporters, the cult of Trump, that are just going to cause problems. Yeah, it seems like F Trump has been using Fox and Twitter for his vehicle to propagandize the public of the United States while wearing the moniker of the president of the united states which is you know it's it's scary and you know that you know what that leads to uh did, did you see the report i sent you where they're running um trump ads in washington dc and his campaign said well basically they were doing that to appease trump so he can see his own commercials on tv as he's watching tv because they're not going to change any voters in washington dc's <laughs> wow just wow <laughs> Just wow. Any, <laughs> anyway, ego. yeah, we had uh, we had another uh, protest erupt uh, this weekend. Actually, I think it was in addition to the protests that have already been going on about the George Floyd murder. And this one was uh, the uh, Atlanta police shooting. And I know that I'm sure that everybody in the group here today and who are watching have already heard about this. But it happened, what was it, Friday Friday morning, Saturday morning, real early, Shanda? Or? Yeah, it was very early Saturday morning. Yeah, very early Saturday morning. I know, Joy, you caught, we talked about this too. But let's, uh, let's let Crystal have her due here and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it a little bit closer. Breaking news, uh, an ongoing story out of Atlanta. It sparked more protests and actually the burning of a Wendy's and Wendy's and surrounding area. So this all started Friday night, another officer involved killing of uh, a black man who was not armed with a lethal weapon. That man is named Rayshard Brooks. And essentially what happened here, and we do have a lot of video, so we have a, a lot of a very fairly thorough understanding of exactly what transpired is uh, the police received calls because he was sleeping in his car in a Wendy's drive through and cars were having to go around him in order to get his food. Um, we have some video here warning. Some of this is disturbing and this is a compilation of both body camera footage and cell phone footage from onlookers at the scene. Let's take a look at some of what transpired. Hey. Copy 41 Sir. Westbound at What's up, man? Westbound. Hey, you're parked in the, the drive-thru right now. Oh. Hey, sir. Hey, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Man, you didn't mean go back to uh, sleep. You, you gotta, gotta move your car. Go back, back to sleep. The reason why we're here is because somebody called 911 because you were asleep behind the wheel while you are in the drive-thru, right? So you see him here. First of all, everything is going pretty okay. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. calm. They give him a breathalyzer. And then when they move to arrest him is when he begins to resist. You see a struggle here on the ground. He's able to get a taser out of the hands of one of the officers. And then he, he takes off running with the taser. You can see him running here. That's Mr. Brooks. And if you watch in this surveillance footage, you can see him running. At one point, he actually turns and tries to sort of wildly fire the taser. Again, this is a taser, it's not a, a weapon that he has. 
And it's at that point that the police officer shoots him uh, mm -hmm. three times, I believe, in the back. Uh, he takes they're ta he's taken to the hospital where he ultimately dies. Um, the political fallout has been immediately immediate. The fallout on the street has been immediate. Mass protests, as I mentioned, they set fire to that Wendy's. The police chief of Atlanta has stepped down. Uh, the officer who actually fired the fatal shots there has been terminated from the police force. The other officer who was involved has been paced, placed on administrative leave. So that's what we know at this point. And, and like I said, there's a lot of footage here and it's essentially very calm. Uh, Mr. Brooks is cooperating with the, the police. He's intoxicated. That's what they find from the breathalyzer test. And then it's when they move to arrest him that things really, really go off the rails and, you know, end in this just horrific and frankly unconscionable way. Yeah, that um, again, that I watched that. I'm sure a lot of us uh, have, have viewed that several times. Uh, your thoughts uh, on this, Joy? Uh, well, well, two things to me of things that Crystal should have said. Um, Number one, she should have said that the person who started the fire at the Wendy's was a white woman. We have video. We know this for a fact. This is incredibly important. We need to make sure that we say that every single time we talk about, you know, the Wendy's being on fire. That is so important. And the other thing she should have said is that this happened over the span of 40 minutes. Like 40 minutes. How long do you have to take someone and say, you're drunk? You can't say, look, I'll give you a ride home. I'll give you a citation. Even come with me to the jail so we can book you because you're drunk. You can do any of that. You have to sit there and wait and harass this man for 40 minutes to try and get him to do something, to try and get him worked up to try and get him upset and then you're you know you're shot like 40 minutes that's insane that's an excellent point that's excellent point joy and and your point about the wendy's and the white woman you know i posted that story yesterday and sadly i had a lot of progressives come on my page and say what does that matter why do you got to say that and I said, I got to say that because the black community and the protesters are being blamed for this when it is not them. You know, just to have to even clarify that within our movement tells me some people aren't getting it. And um, yeah, the 40 minute thing, you're absolutely right. I mean, we saw a lot of footage before the incident where they're talking with him. Um, you know, they don't clearly state that you're under arrest. They just say, put your hands behind your back. You're dealing with an intoxicated person whose reasoning is obviously in, not working at the moment, you know. So they should have been so much clearer with him at, at what their plan was, you know. We're going to take you home. We're going to arrest you, you know. This unknown, it just put your hands behind your back, especially if you're a person of color. You don't know what they're going to do to you. So this brings me to the question, is it to protect and serve except when you're drunk or to protect and serve in all cases? And, and uh, I, that gentleman didn't get protected. I understand what the arguments are going to be. And I think we talked in the green room. We feel like uh, this is not going to go well for anybody, but they're not going to they're going to drop the charges against the officer. Don't you Jesus. think? Yeah. Absolutely. And the, the, also the thing is, is that protect and serve as in quotations on the officer's car. So they know damn right well, we better just, you know, put these in quotes because it's really just symbolic. Um, but yeah, and, and, you know, now there's been another hanging already do, deemed a suicide, even though nothing has been looked into. Sure, it's uh, like in California, two of them are within 50 miles of each other, and now one in New York, and they're just all automatically suicide. Like, we're seeing these things over and over. And the thing about the Wendy's drive through with Mr. Brooks is 
racists love a situation like this. They love it because he was drunk. Already, he's guilty. Yeah, well, he was drunk. It's just like every single time a black man or black woman is murdered, well, she had a history of doing pot. Or just the dumbest crap that is totally irrelevant. It does not negate that these unarmed black people are being murdered. But people who like to try and rationalize, they they just stop at that point and they're like, see, he was drunk. Yeah. Okay. That that goes with the, you know, so drunk is not equivalent to mental illness, is it? Or disabled individuals? I mean, to me, it's all a, a type of sickness or and a malady to being functional in human society. And we all can't have keepers. It just depends on what our disability is or what our mental issue is or what our sickness levels are. So I believe that that should fall under protect and serve and you know that's that's where we should be a little more thoughtful and this is we can get into the discussion and i don't want to right now i want to finish off the segment but again when we talk about defunding or disbanding the police particularly defunding um maybe if we put those funds towards you know the mental health the alcohol rehab the alcohol you know sort of thing and i'm not sound i hope i'm not sounding all hearts and flowers here this is reality we're talking about the man had uh, alcohol poisoning sickness you know so that that's where i'm looking at it from but what 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 kind of bothered me today and i even reached out on uh, the comments on, on this post, uh, that's what Sagar said here, and I want to get you uh, both your, your views on this. I'll, I'll run this for a minute or so. ...shows that the city is a tinderbox, but I think we should mention is that this is a very much more complicated situation than what happened with George Floyd. I mean, this is a person who did steal a taser from a police officer, and it's not a, you know, like police, police are allowed to arrest people um, for being intoxicated behind a vehicle or for driving a vehicle. I don't think that the shooting necessarily was justified, but I do think that this is something that's gonna be very difficult to navigate around, which is that there are people who attack police officers whenever they're trying to be arrested. And we can't just say, you know, overall as a country, that it is never justified in order for an officer to defend himself. Again, I'm not saying that that was particular in this case, but I've seen a lot of sweeping calls for saying that this is another instance um, similar to George Floyd. And I just, you know, I, the officer wasn't defending himself when he was chasing them and put three slugs in his back. Uh, they were defending themselves on the ground, and I almost would have bought into this had the uh, man been grabbing for the officer's gun trying to pull it away. I mean, that, that, that to me would change the dynamic to where Sauger is getting at here. And I find Sauger being very, is it obtuse or um, negligent in how he parsed what he said by saying necessarily. I mean, this is, it isn't necessarily, you know, whether he should have shot him or not. Well, he did shoot him and he shot him in the back and the guy was running away. So I, I, I just didn't appreciate where Sagar was coming from. And it sounded more like right wing talking points in defense of the officers. What do you ladies think? Uh, uh, Shanda, what do you think about that? Well, sadly, before you even ran this clip for me this morning, I knew that would be Sagar's reaction. It's going to be he he uh, mutually combated with the police. He he took the taser. But, you know, when somebody is shot in the back, that absolutely means that they weren't in danger the guy was going the other direction and i just see this as ego i see a cop or two maybe younger cops who uh didn't want to go back to the police station and say that a you know a drunken guy had taken their taser from them and you know this shooting him in the back was I thought we weren't allowed to shoot in the back. You know, I remember growing up in the 70s and 80s, and if a car was fleeing, a cop, an officer was not allowed to open fire at it. I don't understand when that changed, or was I always just, did I always have that wrong? I, I don't know. Yeah. Joy? I think it depends on the state. But, I mean, yeah, well, the, you, you shoot someone in the back, you're, I mean, you're doing that you know, they're running away, put it that way. Um, but the the thing about Sagar's comment that's so humorous is he's like, 
he says that and then he's like i'm not saying this is <laughs> one of those instances then why'd you bring it up you're gaslighting dude you oh. are gaslighting, like period you don't bring up something and try to rationalize it and then be like i'm not saying that's this kind of thing or applicable right now but then don't share it <laughs> we need a clear definition uh, of what is um at a, th rest, a risk of threat. So from coast to coast in this country, like you said, it goes state to state. And, and the problem is, is some states have, you know, their threshold of how threatened you are. You know, I, that's part of this reform is we've got to talk about, you know, when a cop should be able to pull a weapon or when they feel threatened, not this just if you feel threatened, shoot. Because that's what we're seeing right now. Well, they're going to come up to you, Shannon, and say, you don't walk in my shoes. You don't face the, you know, the, the threats that I face every day. It's awfully easy for you to be an armchair quarterback and right. so on and so forth. However, again, uh, your point, you know, the, the, the cops were going to go back to the station and have this guy, you know, that busted loose and took some of their gear away. Non-lethal, for that matter, running away from a situation. You know what? It's we need to, as a as a human species in law enforcement, we need to really give ourselves a gut check. And is that really what we're what we're all about? Do we shoot people in the back uh, doing our so called job? Is that what we we're trained to do? And I'll go back to when you hire people straight out of the military. For, with that mindset, it's hard to mold it into a society of law enforcement. So again, I you know I can defend the cop made probably the worst mistake he ever made in his life in this situation. But he was a seven year veteran, something like that. Uh, again, um, you know that these things are all in question. And sure, I'm going to be an armchair quarterback. But the thing of it is, we see this every single day, and I don't see things specific measures being taken to correct or help this situation. No, you said a point there, Oz, that I, I want I want to elaborate on. You're absolutely right. I, I I am an armchair quarterback when it comes to this, but you know, um living the life that I've lived, I, I have had many, many, many encounters with the police and I understand that they don't know the situation that they're coming into. They don't know if they pull somebody over when they walk up to that car window, are they going to get shot too? But, you know, their number one priority can't be, I'm going home tonight, no matter who I have to kill to do it. They're, they're you know, and this is where mental health uh, counselors and more, you know, community, the, the police are covering too much shit is basically, you know, thanks to Clinton, right? Clinton is the one who rolled back, uh, you know, um, the money that we had going into mental health facilities. I remember when I was a teenager, our all of our local hospitals had a nut ward, right? Where somebody who was acting crazy or was having some kind of health, mental health emergency went to for a 72 hour lockdown or a two week lockdown. We don't do that in this country anymore. We don't evaluate anybody that we think is having a mental health crisis. We leave them on the streets for the police to deal with. And so that has to be a huge uh, factor in changing this. I, yeah, I agree. I think Reagan let him out and Clinton kept him out. So that's that's, right. that's where it's at. Joy, your feelings uh, before we press on here? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like my husband's a social worker. You know what I mean? You have people who deal with, you know, situations every day where people may or may not, you know, um, have incidents or whatever, whether it's social workers, therapists, whatever, yet you don't hear about things like this with them. So, like, I always think about, I cannot get this one case out of my head. It was a year or two ago, and there was a black gentleman who was laying in the middle of the road, hands up. He was this guy's counselor. Now, the the guy was autistic and had mental retardation, and he was sitting on the curb next to, you know, the doctor. I don't know if he did. They didn't believe he was the therapist. I don't know what the issue was, but he was literally laying on his back in the street with his hands up, and they shot him right in front of his patient who was special needs. Oh, my God. I cannot get that out of my head. 
there's, there's video of it. And it's just, it's perfectly, you know, epitomizes when people are not trying to deal with people with mental health issues um, and things like that, you know, they get suicide calls. They, they don't need to have guns pulled on them. That is literally like the uh-huh. worst thing you could do to someone who's like, I want to die. Yeah. Um, yeah. They want to commit, they want to self suicide by cop. That was a, a that was a sad, sad, sick joke, but it's a reality. And, uh, unfortunately when we get depressed in our lives and we, we've had moments where, you know, we've had bad thoughts. We've just been disgusted with everything. You know, um, tell me that hasn't crossed everybody's mind. Maybe it hasn't, but um, that's that's really a tough thing to do. We've got a piece of sad satire here that uh, Shanda offered this morning. It's called Let's Talk About Police Journalists and a Phone Call. And Shanda, you want to you wanna preface this before I drop it in a little bit? This is Carrie, yeah. Carrie Wedler, and this gentleman's name is... Uh, Bo, I can't remember his last name, but yeah, yeah it's Carrie and Bo. Um, I can't remember the channel name. Somebody it's the anti-media. Me. Oh, the anti-media. Yeah. This guy does really great commentary, and I think he has a unique perspective. He kind of, you, you can tell he lives in the South, so he definitely is coming from a, <laughs> a blue stuck in reds, but uh, he really, it's sad, but it's true what he's going to say. Yeah, it is sad. And we just, we spun it up a little bit and that's why Shanda prefaced it for you. But he's going to talk about this and then he's going to call uh, Carrie and ask her who. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about the case of It's 2 a.m. Hey, what was the name of uh, the person that I wrote the, the unarmed person that got shot? I wrote the article about it. I don't know. You edited it. Tamir Rice? No, I remember that one. That was the kid in the park. John Crawford? Mm-hmm. That was the guy in the Walmart with the BB gun in an open carry state. Daniel Shaver? Which one was that? The one where the cop challenged him to life or death, Simon says. Oh, that was horrible. That's a horrible video. Uh, no, that, that's not it either. Um, no. No. They killed her? No. Mm-mm. Keep going. No. No. Which one was... Oh. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. Two hours later. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Alton Sterling. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Good night. This video is based on a real conversation. There are so many unarmed people killed by police, journalists can't even keep track. We might want to take that as a sign that we need to change the system. Yeah, we might want to take that as a sign. And yeah, Carrie's pretty straightforward with this. Um, You know, I saw both of you shaking your heads in the the stage. Uh, Your thoughts, Joy, on this? You know, I'm guilty of it too. I, you know, I am, I, I've had to refer to my notes and say, holy shit, what was the most current one? Like you, there are just so many that it's, it's so sad. I'm getting choked up. That, that, that happens. It's, it's heartbreaking. Right. And I I think people are are desensitized to it. My husband said to me yesterday morning as I was watching the Brooks video for the first time, I don't know how you can sit and watch that stuff every day without it affecting you. And I thought about it for a minute and I thought, you're right. I think I'm starting to be desensitized. I mean, it still hurts and I still want to cry, but yeah, repetitive, just it's got to stop. Well, this is, you know, I caught a fun fact this morning on one of one of the shows. It was probably The Hill. I don't know. But I, I do I do watch more than The Hill, ladies and gentlemen. I watch the Twitters and everything else. But over in the UK somewhere, since 1900 up until recently, they've had 50, 50 uh, citizens uh, killed by police. Now, I mean, killed by police. And they were saying in... 
March alone, March for uh, us, maybe till now, we, police have killed over a hundred uh, citizens. Not you know, not all you know of color, but right. And we mostly. don't know because we're not tracking. And we're not tracking, you know. And and this again, well, you're gonna keep score. Yeah, I, I guess we we really do need to keep score because we you know it's it's the facts, and that's that's where it's at. I I've got a clip here from Zed Jelani um, about. This issue primarily, it was about gaslighting uh, into tribal politics, but they referred to this situation this weekend, and I just want to run this real quick. Sagar has somebody here that kind of sees what he's trying to say about the situation. I don't agree with Zed either. You know, in terms of the obviously the fatal shooting that was involved, the firing and the handling of all of that, and also on Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms and her kind of ascendance um, in Joe Biden's vice presidential list, which we talked about earlier in the mm. show. What what's your take on much of what's going on down there? Yeah, I mean, I I I think when I was on Fox last, I talked about Lance Bottoms, and I said that I felt like she was handling this a little bit better than some other mayors, in that she was pairing police reform with also very unequivocally condemning looting, rioting, arson. And I think that's part of the reason Atlanta saw a lot, lot less of this, that people felt less licensed to do it. Uh, of course, this latest shooting casts a pall over that. Many people are questioning her leadership now. Um, and of course, the shooting itself is much thornier, I think, than what happened with George Floyd. Uh, it seemed like the man in question uh, got into a physical fight with police officers and took one of their right. tasers. Uh, at that point, many police feel authorized to shoot. Uh, many would say it was still unnecessary. So I think this is gonna be a much thornier case um, and I think for Lance Bottoms, she's going to be hit from both sides on this because I think a lot of people in Atlanta are very kind of tribal about public safety. It, it tends to be a little bit safer among a lot of the big cities, and they like that safety, and they're going to have a reflexive response in favor of police. But at the same time, the left, I think, is seeing every case through kind of a singular lens where I think they wouldn't really take into account the officer's point of view here or take into account the fact that the officers were attacked. I don't think the left is seeing every case through a singular lens. Do you ladies think that the left is seeing every case through a singular lens? Hell no. The but left I, are out there protesting. What the yeah. fuck are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I mean, again, I, and Zed, w it, to me, is another another armchair quarterback. And and I, I think Melissa, you know, Melissa H. Uh, said in, in the chat here a little while ago, shooting somebody in the back three times is just wrong, period. Period, 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 period. Again, you get into the minutia of wrestling for a weapon. At that point, something would have happened. Yeah, but this was, again, running away. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I, do, I, I don't believe this man could be in any way conceived as a threat to the public. So uh, I guess I can leave it at that and let's close this out and move on. Ladies, last word on this? No, I think we beat this one down today. Yeah, I really beat the hell out of it, but it's so important. Uh, Joy, you want to yes. add to that at all? or? Um, no, yeah. I, I concur. Yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> I mean, this is just... But we're, I, I try to bring in other voices to... to illustrate what Sager is trying to say in all fairness, but I think he lost it with his first uh, oration on this thing about ne necessarily. That's that's what burned in my brain. Necessarily. Are we whittled down to being necessarily items in, in life? So uh, I guess let's see. Let's let's check out uh, Jake Tapper um, whom I just abhor. Not adore. No, abhor. No tapper. Oh, I do not like Jake Tapper, but um, Larry Kudlow and Jake Tapper, seeing them both together on the screen makes me want to have a cyclically vomiting session, but let's see what they got to say here. <laughs> In over on CNN that we wanted to bring to you where uh, host Jake Tapper was aggressively pressing Larry Kudlow, he's of course White House economic advisor, on transparency around the coronavirus bailout funds. Let's take a listen. Well, look, I, I think in terms of those that shouldn't have qualified, okay. a lot of them have returned the money and Ooh. some of those have been Ooh. named. But I think when Secretary Mnuchin talked about transparency, he talked about the transparency of the process 
of making the evaluation for the loan and then the distribution of the loan. By the way, for what it's worth, the Congressional Budget Office just put out a report complimenting the Treasury and the administration for getting all these forms of assistance out in a very rapid time. There's been nothing like its biggest rescue in American history and the uh, efficacious distribution, the whole system, which is transparent. There is an IG that's going to watch over that. Uh, that's what the Secretary is talking about. You know, he we said have we a will be reporting to the public. No, 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 sir, I'm sorry. Reserve. He said we would report to the public. That's what he said. We will be reporting to the public. That's us, the American people, and we have a right to know where these tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars have gone. If there's no problem with it, if everything's fine with it, great. But it, I mean, otherwise, it is about as swampy a deal as I can ever imagine. The government giving out hundreds of millions of dollars and the American people don't even get to know who got it. Well, I don't know that I would judge it that way. I don't think it was sloppy. Again, I swampy, repeat, swampy. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good Just moment. To be clear, swampy, not sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, I, mean, I would I say it was kind of sloppy, actually. But it seems like all of the above, frankly. Mm. I mean, there are a couple things there. First of all, Kudlow being like, "Well, we said the process would be transparent, not necessarily that you would actually know where these loans." went to i thought was a pretty incredible attempt at spin there which tapper obviously tries to call him out on and look we have covered here relentlessly on this show democrats were pathetic in all of this everybody signed up and went along with the approach of this program and the reason why the transparency ultimately ends up being so important is because they put a cap on the funding right because they're you know picking winners and losers going on at the bank level and the treasury level on down and so accountability after the fact is kind of the lamest possible thing that we could get but yeah it's the lamest you know i'm weary of of wealth transfer aren't you ladies worried weary of wealth transfer I mean, here's Jake Tapper, uh, a multi-millionaire, if that means anything these days, <laughs> talking to to Larry Kudlow about, you know, how bad the transparency situation is when Tapper's going to benefit from it. I mean, give me a break. Talk about irony. Does it, you guys want to throw in on this? <laughs> Hypocrisy at its finest. The rich talking to the rich about the money that they stole from us and the fact that they are not going to tell us or show us how they stole it. We're never going to have transparency on this. We knew when they passed the damn act, we would never. And, you know, yeah, oh, they're giving the money back. Who's giving the money back? I think I heard the LA Lakers got forced to give the money back. But other than that, I haven't heard of too many yeah, that have They didn't voluntarily the give shit back. Joy? Exactly. <laughs> What do you think? Well, you know, I can't help every time I see Munchen's name, Mnuchin or whatever. Munchkin, yeah, I go ahead. I cannot Sorry, not think of how Kamala had him uh, defended him so that he wasn't in prison. So exactly. anytime you talk about Mnuchin, it's kind of like, thanks, Kamala. Um, but also, um, you know... <laughs> The thing is, and this is going to sound really defeatist, but at this point, yes, I feel like we absolutely deserve to know. But it's like, if we do know, what the fuck's going to happen anyway? Yeah, exactly. What does it fucking matter? The money's gone. Well, yeah. If I, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. it's not like they're going to be like, oh, you're right. We shouldn't have taken it. I mean... Uh, it's surrealism on steroids, and that was kind of the point why I wanted to run that clip. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, may I have another, please? It's like, yeah, it was terrible. I, I just, I guess that's the comedy part of the show. <laughs> it was just awful. Um, Absolutely. So I, we haven't talked about the uh, short list for Biden that dropped yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah, please. We, we, why, we, why didn't we talk about that? So these big contenders right now, Klobuchar seems to be fading Klobuchar. away just because of her bullshit with, uh, you know, what happened in Minnesota and this cop. But we got two that are rising to the top that scare the shit out of me. And that is Rice 
and Susan Rice and um, Carmela Harris is back on the list now. Yeah, I think I, I said before, I think it's going to be Kamala Harris. I, I do, too. She made him three point five million in a fundraiser yeah, last week. And it. that's ultimately we know that's what it comes down to. Who can raise money and she can raise money. And I'll, tell, I'll tell you why I think you're right. Kamala Harris, the optics, just the optics. She's perfect for 2024 yes. for the Democrats. She's yes. perfect. She is Obama 2024. And I got news. I don't think it's going to work out so well. What do you think, no. Joy? What do you think, Joy? <laughs> well, okay. So selfishly, I would be pissed if it was Kamala just because she sucks, but also because I really want to see K Hive melt down that it's not her, like selfishly. Like, I really want to see them just like get that karma after how bullying and horrible they have been to us as a group. I kind of want to be like, Hi, you, she didn't get picked. Um, <laughs> so that's just, you know, on a more insipid level. But I totally agree. You know, um, uh, optics level alone, he's getting called out as racist, rightfully so, especially, you know, in this time. So what better to be like, I'm not racist, than to be like, I have a black friend, just like he always does with Obama. Yeah. Also, the thought that he's even considering a cop right now is so completely tone deaf. Yep. Um, and if he thinks, here's the other thing, they will not gain any new voters nope. by picking Kamala. No. Everybody who supports Kamala is already going to vote for Joe. <laughs> you right. need to worry about pleasing progressives, which honestly isn't really possible. Oh, well, Warren's back on the list, but, too. Warren? What's that? Yeah, Warren's back on the list, too. Really? Where'd you hear that? Oh, well, that's just great. <laughs> I heard it on Rising. Rising did a clip. I'm surprised you missed it. But the, the one they're really pushing is Rice, Susan Rice, which Susan Rice has no domestic policy. She's foreign policy. And that just goes to show how out of touch they are if they think that Americans are more concerned with foreign policy and the nightmare disastrous Benghazi that Susan Rice put us through. And let's face it. Come on. The Rice family, they're fucking Republicans. How she got in the Obama cabinet is still a mind blower to me. No relation to Condoleezza Rice. Well, there was an article two days ago about how Condoleezza Rice would be a perfect fit. Ah. <laughs> well, sure, why not? We've already rehabilitated W, so let's just uh, bring his whole yeah. damn cabinet in. I mean, what the hell? I don't see the big divide of the cabinets as far as, you know, the Clinton cabinet and the Bush cabinet. Truly. Yeah, they, you they're know, all they, Citibank. Yeah, I mean, they're all Citibank. I mean, they all, they all dine together and they all party together. So <laughs> why not they go to weddings together so you know let's keep how, it all together but how ironic is it that literally the only person who had you know uh, the who basically went at joe during the dates is the one that's like yup i could be his vp like right. is she gonna wear her like that little girl was me t-shirt <laughs> like accepting her vp you know nomination you legit called him out oh stop and it joy you're gonna cause a meme storm <laughs> you're gonna cause a meme storm joy <laughs> <laughs> oh my hey, god it i'm keeping it real as always oh my god that's yes. right we love it keeping it real so what about warren i mean what if they throw elizabeth warren at us to appease the progressives to, to touch that voter well, base what? anyone who thinks she's progressive is completely like no yeah. like doesn't even understand conceive what the word progressive means she progressively sucks more and more each day that's <laughs> all that's progressive about her i you know there's all these articles and posts about you want to get the burners to vote for joe but elizabeth more not what we cannot stand her are you kidding me she's already said no on medicare for all 
She disrespected us countless times. She blatantly lied about Bernie saying yep. she couldn't be president. She ignored Standing Rock. She yep. stood up and gave a standing ovation, which Trump said socialism would never happen. She called us bullies because we had snake emojis. And she didn't, if she would have endorsed us, that would have made the right. difference. Right. And she wants to censor the internet just because we sent her those snake, snake emojis. You know, we don't forget who she is. We never will. We knew it four years ago just because she occasionally goes after the banks and, and says a few progressive um, platitudes at us doesn't mean she is a progressive. And I, it, it'll be a lose for them. And besides that, Trump will eat her ass alive, calling her Pocahontas the rest of the campaign. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's crazy. I, you know, I. I don't know how to even say this, but I, when I hear people say how progressive Elizabeth Warren is, I'm thinking they must have had too much of that Lucky Charms when they were kids that had the trisodium phosphate in it, the wallpaper stripper. I mean, that's the analogy I get. You guys ate some cereal that's really bad, and I won't even go to Cheerios with glyphosate. But my God, people, wake the hell up! You know, Elizabeth Warren, progressive? Are you kidding me? How has she ever been progressive in my eyes, except for the day or two that she said, oh yeah, Medicare for all and then whoa she walked yeah. it back in a run so she the, ran it back yeah she ran it back anyway uh we're getting a little bit long in the hour i just want to uh, throw this one out here for those of us who still think against the odds of the polls against all odds that trump is still gonna win he's still gonna pull it out and i think michael moore once again, kind of uh, puts it in perspective. Let's see what Michael has to say. The polls are not looking good for President Trump right now, and Joe Biden is obviously up in several states. But one of the most prescient people from the 2016 election, prescient. Michael Moore, is saying that, hey, hold on a second. It's not a done deal. Let's take a listen to what he said. Never take Trump for granted. If anybody is sitting at home right now thinking, oh, man, we've got this one in the bag. Whoa, did you yeah. hear him today? He said he's done more for black people than Abraham Lincoln. Whoa, we're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm telling yeah. you, I'm warning you and I'm begging you, please yeah. do not sell this man short. It doesn't matter what Trump does. They are going to show up and they're yeah. counting on their rage and their emotion is so much stronger. But yeah. they have the, the, the yeah. courage of their convictions. You know, they yeah. they they believe and they're counting on yeah. us not but, showing up in that same way. I, I mean, I think Michael is absolutely right because we should always remember, which is that in the past polling that we see on Biden, it's all very tepid. He has the lowest enthusiasm of a Democratic nominee I think in modern history, Trump, on the other hand, has the double the amount of enthusiasm amongst the people who are going to come out or see is excited in order to vote for him. I think it's somewhere in the 54 percent range of the people who support him. And so that tepid support, as we've covered here, the reason that we cover, you know, Biden's you know, prob problems with minority communities, problems with younger voters and all these others is that. All right. Sagar, he just put me to sleep. I <laughs> right. Me too. Yeah. yeah I was like, <laughs> You know, anyway, but I think Michael Moore has a pretty good point. Was that Joy Reid doing the interview? Yes. So I'm just like, oh, my God, MSNBS and Joy Reid. What are you trying to do to me this Monday morning? Oz? I know. It's like, you know, stick a pencil in your eye socket and shove it through. I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Joy Reid was out there on Twitter this weekend, by the way, saying, oh, how she misses the Obama days. And somebody said, uh, yeah, Obama days when he dropped hundreds of tons of bombs on innocent people right. and started six more wars than we were already in. So <clears throat> Joy Reid deported more people, deported than the, the deporter in chief, all that stuff. <laughs> and I'm sure we've got some Obama fans in the audience. Sorry, but not anyway. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about Michael saying there, there, Joy? What do you think? You think he's got anything there? Absolutely. And, you know, when I was campaigning for Bernie again this time, that's what I was saying. I was saying, you know, Trump supporters are largely abhorrent. Absolutely. However, they have a movement. You cannot deny that. Yeah. They have fury in their support. They are die hard. You better believe they will go to those polls. They will wait outside for a week to vote for him if they have to. They are going to show up. 
And the only person who has a movement other than Trump is Bernard Sanders. Exactly. And y'all fuck him over. That's so right. <laughs> you picked literally someone worse than Hillary. I had no idea such a thing existed. No idea. But at least she had the vagina vote. You know, vote for a woman. <laughs> Biden has nothing. Nothing. No um, redeeming quality whatsoever. Yeah, you, you, you make a good point there. I mean, Trump's got the 1977 Star Wars fans that will camp out a week before the movie tickets are released and uh, they'll they'll be there. Where Joe Biden does not have any real progressives who are going to vote for him. I mean, they really aren't, you know, and you can say, oh, you ain't going to vote for, for Joe. I, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to vote against Trump, but it ain't going to be uh necessarily voting for joe hey i see sauger i got some sauger on me necessarily today Ew, Sorry. get it off you get it off Ew. you i just want to point out as burners we know how the polls have been bullshit for years and years hillary was projected to win in every goddamn poll in this country so i don't i don't believe this biden's up by 11 points 12 points yeah trump has fumbled the corona response and of course the protesting but like you said oz he's gonna pull something out at last minute and don't fucking underestimate him he he knows how to win the art of the deal that's his whole game unless he doesn't want to win and shanda weren't you throwing some that's stuff good. at me yesterday about uh how uh some of our progressive peers are falling into the trap of vote blue no matter yes who. you know and we saw this uh we see crystal i love crystal but i see her falling for it kyle kalinsky he's falling for it they have the fear i call it the fear so they were against voting for biden up until two weeks ago but now that we've seen protests across the country oh shit we got to go back to normal and joe biden's gonna take us to normal so instead of a protest vote i'm just gonna fall in line don't fall in line we're not going to change it at the ballot box we're going to change it in the streets and we're changing it in the streets right now and that takes us getting out there and supporting and being uh peaceful protesters supporting being an ally for the black lives matter community if you think we're going to change it at the ballot box you haven't been paying attention for the last five fucking years yeah, I don't cotton too well of having something shoved down my throat, much less shoved up my ass like Joe Biden's been doing. And I know <laughs> our fellow progressives up there, out there, uh, they feel the same way. Joy, what do you what do you think before <laughs> about all this shit? I I actually unfollowed Crystal. I can't handle that shit. I, you know, first no. she said Bernie needs to drop because. Uh, he should get a, uh, he should say he'll drop if he gets a position with Joe. And I was like, wait, all these people are, are saying he needs to drop. And you're saying he needs to drop? Fuck that. So I unfollowed her. And now, yeah, she's, she's going towards Biden. How can you be progressive and already give your vote to someone without using your leverage? How? You exactly. have five months to be like, no, you will only get my vote if. But no, you're already saying, hey, you have my vote. You don't have to do a damn thing. Right. I have a lot of grudges from 2016. Michael Moore is one of them. Gloria Steinem. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on of people who told me that I had to fall in line and vote for Hillary Clinton. Sarah Silverman. Yeah, we could go forever. And guess what? I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. Oh, you're being ridiculous. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Al Franken's, I wrote Bernie in, yeah, so. Al Franken's the one that pissed me off the most in 2016. I, You know, I have a little understanding of al franken's history from air america days and some of the comments that were made and some of the party doxed him yeah i mean yeah and al got to where he was in minnesota by beating that uh, idiot uh, i can't remember his name even but again uh, al franken he's he was a kool-aid peddler he had to stand out there you know hillary clinton hillary clinton but yeah again uh it, it's it's got to be horror show and we're going to go out with a song uh this after or after the show or our outro song that it's going to be a cruel summer but right now i want to liven it up here's some good news well maybe not so good news but ai is going to be uh and is uh on the precipice of really ratcheting down our rights and our freedoms and everything else i think you're all going to enjoy this one or not yay skynet <laughs> stop it you're giving it away 
<laughs> oh my god i'm not that big of a fan of john oliver but he does have some good segments there's absolutely nothing in between the two and the uk is by no means alone in building out a system australia is investing heavily in a national facial biometric system called the capability which sounds like the name of a netflix original movie although that's actually perfect if you want people to notice it think oh, that seems interesting and then forget it ever existed and you don't have to imagine what this technology would look like in the hands of an authoritarian government because China is unsurprisingly embracing it in a big way. We can match every face with an ID card and trace all your movements back one week in time. We can match your face with your car, match you with your relatives and the people you're in touch with. With enough cameras, we can know who you frequently meet. That is a terrifying level of surveillance. Imagine the Eye of Sauron, but instead of scouring Middle Earth for the One Ring, he was just really into knowing where all his orcs like to go to dinner. <laughs> and some state-funded developers in China seem weirdly oblivious to just how sinister their projects sound. Skynet, yeah. what is that? <laughs> the Terminator is the, the favorite film of our founder. So they, they use the same name, but they want to put something good into this system. So, okay, in the Terminator, Skynet is evil, rains down death from yeah. the sky. But in China, Skynet is good. Yeah, yeah, the difference. <laughs> oh, that's the difference, is it? You know, it's not exactly reassuring that you call your massive, all-encompassing AI network Skynet, but a good version. Because it would be like if the Today Show built a robot journalist and called it Matt Lauer, but good. Oh yeah, this one's completely different. Sure, he does also have a button under his office desk, but all it does is release lilac air freshener. This is the good version. <laughs> This is why I promote wearing your mask. Not only are you protecting others from COVID, but you're protecting yourself from AI. I'll take the robot version of Matt Lauer in the city square. Big, big statue. Let's replace one of those Confederate things with one that shoots air freshener out in the air. Make sure it's Febreze so we toxify the whole populace. But, oh, my God, Skynet. I had a discussion with Medea Benjamin back in 2005. I said, Medea, I never would have thought that the Terminator and Skynet would be what we're building in this world today. And she just shook her head. Absolutely. It's sad, sickening, and scary. Joy, what do you think about them apples? Sorry, what do I think about? Them apples, Skynet, and oh, them facial recognition, and all that great stuff that's going to keep Ooh. us safe. Keep us safe from our sales. Oh, shit. I actually, I did a... a 24 hour live stream event. I didn't do it the whole 24 hours, but um, Ron Placone, Ro, um, Mike Figueredo, um, all of us were, were asked to contribute to like a, an all day type thing uh, where we kind of talked about how creepy that is and how scary it is. Um, and yeah, it's very invasive. It's very um and and you know i always think about like pelosi's the one that's giving trump more power to to do this kind of shit yep. um so i don't like i mean there's some like voyeuristic sexual thing going on there too i think <laughs> like <laughs> let's just like film and like creep on people yeah yeah, you know, this is a topic I think that we could touch on for a long time. There's so many things wrong with this software, these softwares that they're rolling out. They have a overwhelming um, problem identifying uh, people of color's faces. And not only that, they can upload an image that's similar features and the computer mistakens it. So, you know, we're just setting ourselves up for a whole world of hurt with these and and we need to be fighting back against this you know your your rights are gone if somebody's spying on you i mean we're know we're being spied on via our phones via our, our you know our technology but when do we start saying enough when we have no privacy at all left when there's a video of you going to the bathroom there's a video of you of you eating your cereal there's a video of you brushing your teeth i mean where's the line I don't think there is a line. <clears throat> I, I think that it's going to careen out of control more and more and more. And uh, unless we maintain our, our pulse activism in the streets, 
uh, around some of the worst things that our society is dishing up, like the murders of our, our, our sisters and brothers of color. It's just going to careen out of control again. <clears throat> I think it's going to get worse throughout the summer. And unfortunately, it's going to be a cruel summer. And we hope to be here with our friends and be able to have our platform uh, to definitely speak on these issues and stay informed and keep the critical thinking skills well oiled. Um, I, well, my brain is composed of oil, so I don't know how much I'll help. But <laughs> ladies, uh, Joy, you want to you wanna give a, a, an outro uh, for your show tonight? And then Shanda, uh, what do we got coming up this week? Yeah, so um, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Uh, tonight, please join me at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, I'm going to do my premiere show with Uphill Media tonight. So I'm hyped. I'm, I'm hoping uh, my viewers uh, come over from Real Progressive. Um, and I'm hoping to, to meet some new people as well. Yay, we're so excited to have you on. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be a good um, Monday night booth, considering we get nothing but bad news anymore, it seems like. Of course, we have the Daily Dive uh, every day, Monday through Friday. You can join us, and you just never know who's going to show up. Joy, it was great having you on today. The chat really enjoyed you. They think you're funnier and shit, which I do too. <laughs> and, um, of course, we have um, the Accidental Activist on Thursday. I'm hoping hoping to nail down that Georgia Davenport with whole Washington interview that I've been working on for a couple of weeks. So fingers crossed. And uh, Oz, I'm going to kick it back to you because I can't remember anything else going on this week. Okay. Well, many thanks to, to both of you and <clears throat> special shout out to all of our guests. We have uh, Osama. We got Barbara, Melissa, cheese man just joined. Hey cheese. Mm -hmm. Thanks yeah. again for the uh, support. Uh, cheese man, along with Alwalski and Barb and, Jilly and so many others. Jim Lockett, Schultze. Who else do we have? Did I? Uh, Bill Gabriel. Uh, there's Osama again. Anyway, too many to follow up. I just want to say we don't want to have a cruel summer, but it is going to be a cruel summer. So let's try and make it better for our sisters and brothers. Get out there, be active, because uh, we can't do it from home. We really can't. Anyway, this 